Is it true the first original idea was half hour comedy, not an hour? Yeah, long? we did. We talked about really? There was a show, I'm getting the name wrong, what was it, Dr. Dr. Katz? There was an animated, Sure. Uh, That's kind of, it was a really funny show. Uh -huh. uh, basically, uh, comedians coming on, talking to a psychiatrist about their problems. We thought, <laughs> very derivative of that excellent show, we were saying, why why can't it be, then, you know, not, not, not animated, but why can't it be, you know, people walk into Saul Goodman's, you know, iconic office, and it's, we could get a bunch of comics. We could get, you know, all these great... Uh, folks coming in with their legal issue. And we, we literally talked about that for a week or two, uh, Peter and I. And really? We, yeah, we did. We, cause, because we sold this thing. This is like like people out there, you know, scrapping, trying to get a show sold. They're like, right. God, I hate this story. You know, they're thinking, <laughs> watching this, but I don't blame them. But it was when Breaking Bad ended, we could kind of, we were lucky. We could write our own ticket, particularly if, if you know, what we wanted to do next had right. to do with that world. And we said, yeah, let's do Better Call Saul. And everybody said, great. And then Peter and I, once we signed on the dotted line, we thought, oh, man, what are we doing now? What, what, what is this show? Well, I remember, so. you, you again, you were kind of up to Vince Gilligan here on The Rich Eisen Show, our first in-studio guest when we first turned the lights on yeah. in the studio. And you had just come, Chris, right? Didn't you say we just come from uh, the writer's room, right? Yeah, just or, come from season one writer's yeah. room. Right, or Better yeah. Call Saul. Yeah. It was and about so, a 30 minute interview mm -hmm. turned into 90. Yeah, I know. It's pretty much what you, <laughs> it's pretty much what, what you were doing. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I totally understand why, you know, you would be able to bat around some ideas, but uh, clearly I think you landed on the right one and that, and that yeah. this was the, the one character, right? Like, yeah. did you, was there another character that you were thinking of maybe going, or was it always Saul from the very beginning? It was we Bob Odenkirk, it was Saul, and that was well, it from the yeah, beginning. Yeah, you know what, what it was? It, it, we, we weren't really thinking of a spinoff. It's just, it was so much fun. I think the very first time anyone floated the idea, it was one of our crew people on the set, and it was probably only... It was in Breaking Bad. It was maybe only an episode or two after Saul had first appeared. It might have been in season two of Breaking Bad. And one of our crew folks, uh, one of our grips or gaffers, said, you know, when you guys are doing the Saul Goodman spinoff, you really need to... And everybody laughed. We all laughed. But the joke became... It's kind of planted a seed in our heads, and we thought, you know, that would be fun to do a spinoff. We we weren't really <laughs> thinking... We it wasn't It wasn't this logistical kind of gee, what we need to do next is spin somebody off. Who do we pick? We just, it kind of naturally grew from wanting to keep the crew together, uh, thinking Bob, Bob's character is just fun to write. He's just yeah. plain fun, you know. And, and it really kind of sprung from that kind of a, you know, very uh, relaxed and, and, and uh, you know, nobody was thinking that far ahead. It was that, 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 that disorganized a beginning. Really. Well, I mean, two things leap to mind. Number one, because that allows you to have as many characters from the Breaking Bad world if you yeah. set it when you set it, which yeah. is behind the, you know, you know, back story yeah. leading up to the Breaking Bad world and then have some black and white about what happens to him once he, now that he is on the run right. under a new identity. Just brilliant that you could do that. And then number two is Brian Cranston came on the show a few years ago to promote his book, uh, A Life in Parts. Yeah. And we talked to him about the the uh, character, uh, Tim Watley, who he played, yeah, the dentist, the dentist. Yeah. on Seinfeld. Yeah. And the scene where he took a hit of the laughing gas himself right. before administering it to Jerry. Right. And that was an ad lib that he did, suggested to him by a member of the crew, uh, similar to what you just said. Wow. Yes, he told that like story. The lighting guy, or something. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so somebody suggests, you know, what would be funny is yeah. you're the dentist, you take a hit of it yourself, and yeah. he's like, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. And and then he said he did that, and the whole crew broke up. And then yeah. he looked at the ladder, lighting guy, and the guy, ladder goes, yeah. you know, like, hey. And he and he used a phrase that we use here all the time: yeah. "Best idea wins." Oh yeah. He uses that. Yeah. He's. We use that phrase yeah. all the time. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing that that's yeah. how Better Call Saul first got planted in your brain. It, it is, and and by the way, we the funniest line we ever had on Breaking Bad came from one of our one of our grips. Which is what? I to me, my favorite. Okay. Everyone's got a favorite, sure. but it was an episode called Four Days Out. It was it was uh, uh, Walt and Jesse are are cooked uh, did this marathon cook in their RV, and now the battery is dead in their RV. They're 30 miles from nowhere. They're 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 dying. They're they're dehydrating. They've run out of water. Yes. And Jesse says, "Come on, you're a scientist. You gotta figure this out. We got these spare parts. You could build a dune buggy, or you could build a robot, or," and 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 you know, and 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 Walt says, 
I forget some of the dialogue, but yeah. Walt winds up saying, you, you gave me the idea. And in the original script, you gave me the idea, we're going to build a battery and we're mm -hmm. going to, and, and one of her, one of her, and we had finished the day. We had wrapped for the day. Oh boy. And, and uh, one of the, one of the grips said, you know, it would be funny if you said, you gave me the idea yourself. And Jesse goes, a robot? <laughs> <laughs> and it made everybody laugh on the set. And talk about, talk about a group effort. Not only did this wonderful crewman come up with this line, but Michelle McLaren, our director of that episode, mm -hmm. looked around and said, we got to get that. Turn the machines and back on. Literally kind of fibbed all right flat out lied to our to our uh, to our producer said uh we had a we had an issue we had a hair in the gate luckily back then we we're shooting film you right. get away with that we had a, we had a hair we had a hair in the gate no, you can't. Can't do that now. no they're, they're on to you now Great, but yeah. uh, we got a hair in the gate oh crap we got to do that last one and he did the line it's in the episode my personal favorite line in the whole series best idea wins yeah, yeah. and it's Cranston said that i'll yeah. never forget that line and that's the way it should be and it's not always that what i mean not every show is that way. Sometimes it's kind of rigid, and sometimes you sure. know, showrunner says, "And nah, it's got to be my way." And I always think, ah, "Poor you. That's like uh, that's you are missing out on so much greatness uh, by not listening to to your crew, to the people, to the people around you. They're, they're they're full of great ideas, and best idea should always win. I think."